there's the idea that the command line is this big, scary thing that you have to learn and be the master of if you're going to be a good Linux user. And for the most part, that's complete and utter nonsense. The vast majority of Linux users can go their entire Linux careers, if you want to call it that, without using the terminal more than a few times. I wouldn't say never use it because they probably will once in a while have to use it, but for the most part, everything you can do in the terminal can be done with a GUI of some kind. But for the people who enjoy using the terminal and want to learn how to use it, there are several really neat tricks that you can use to improve your efficiency and just do some really neat stuff. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 tips and tricks that will help you become a much better terminal user. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here we are in the terminal. It doesn't really matter what terminal emulator you're using. So first of all, I guess I should define that term. So if you're a Linux noob or a terminal noob, a terminal emulator is basically what your shell runs in. And it's a translation layer. It's not really the right term, but it's a, a mechanism that will associate, that will translate between your shell and or your terminal and the running kernel underneath. It's more technical than that, but just know that that's what a terminal is. It allows you to interact with your system through commands. So the first tip I'm going to give you is while you're navigating through your file structure, there's there are ways to get back and forth from one place to another. So everyone knows the CD command. That's change directory. So let's just go ahead and change into my media directory and my documents directory. And we'll do an ls here. Let's say I wanted to go back to the last directory. In this case, it's the home directory, but we can change that. Let's go ahead and cd into pages. Okay, and we'll go into another directory. Let's say I wanted to go back to the directory above this. Now, there are several ways to do this. We could do cd dot dot. That would work. Or we could just do cd tilde slash documents or media documents. That would work. And it's a lot of typing, but it's, you know, theoretically you could do that if you wanted to do that. Or you could use this first tip, and that's just do cd dash, and that takes you back to the last working directory. Now, it's not that impressive when it's just a directory up, so let's go ahead and go to cd slash etsy and then samba. Let's just say you're editing your samba configuration file, and this is where you got to go. Now we're in Etsy Samba. Let's say we wanted to go back to documents. So we just do CD dash. There'd be no easy way of doing this. The only two ways I know of doing this would be to do CD tilde slash media documents. So it had to go through in that way. But if we use our trick, just do CD dash, that takes us back to the documents folder. So what this does is it takes you back to the last working directory. And that's our first tip. So the next tip is a key binding that will allow you to search through your command history. Now, every terminal, no matter what shell it's running, whether it's bash, zsh, fish, whatever, they all keep a record of the commands that you run. Some shells keep a history much longer than others. Some keep it for a shorter amount of time. It doesn't matter. They all do it. They all keep a, a, a history of your commands. And I'm running ZSH here, and I let's say I wanted to search through a command. Now, I could just hit the up key, and that would cycle through my entire command line history, one at a time, just going up a list. And it could go, it goes back and back and back as, as far as the history goes. But let's say you don't want to have to go through and keep hitting the up key over and over and over again. Let's say you don't want to do that. If you use the key binding control R, you get this thing. And... That, what this allows you to do is search through your command history. So I know I have a script called MMDTS. And I've ran that before, but it's been almost two weeks now because this is my bash challenge script. And I haven't ran it since the podcast was recorded. So it's way back in history. But I know it was there. So I can go through and search my command history using control R. That is all you have to do. And then you can just go through and do this. Now, obviously, this command won't work because it's not, we're not in the right directory, but you can go through and search your, your command history in that way. So that's number two. So this next one is a little bit different depending on which shell you use. So I'm using ZSH, and this is going to work a little bit different in Bash. 
than it does in ZSH. So just keep that in mind. If it doesn't do exactly how it does it for me, it might do it a little bit of free for you. And I will try to explain that. So let's say you want, you've made a mistake somewhere. So let's do sudo nano slash Etsy. Oh, let's do user share x sessions and then uh, dwm.desktop. Let's say I made a mistake somewhere way back here. It doesn't matter. I didn't make a mistake, but let's just say I did. If you're in bash, you can delete from the cursor all the way to the end by hitting control U. Now, as you see, that doesn't work in ZSH. It control U deletes the whole damn line. Why they're different, I don't know but they are different. So if you've made a mistake and you just want to delete the whole line without having to just hold the backspace all the way to, to the back, hit control U, that will delete the whole line in ZSH. How it works in Bash, I'm, we can actually find out how it works in Bash. I can just go to Bash here and do the same thing, sudo nano slash Etsy. Oh, I did it again, share, user share x sessions. And, and then we can go back here and do control U and see what it does. Yeah, that deletes from that line to the beginning. I, I said that wrong earlier. So control U deletes from that line to the beginning of the, to the prompt. Now, let's say you wanted to go the other direction. Control K will delete from the cursor to the end of the line. So control K. So we'll just do some random typing here. Uh, and go back here. So if you're in bash, control U goes from the cursor to the end to the beginning of the line control k goes from the cursor to the end of the line like i said it doesn't work the same in bash uh if we go back to zsh here and do our same random typing and we do control u it'll, it obviously it will delete the whole thing now the control k works just fine it's really weird why they changed it i don't know it's it's one of the stupidest things I've found in ZSH so far. I, I don't understand why they changed that one uh, uh, key binding. It doesn't make sense. But just keep in mind, depending on what shell you use, some of these are going to be a little bit different. So one of the great things about Control U in ZSH, though, if we just hit Control U, when you let's say we wanted to do an update here, and we enter the password. And I'm just typing random letters here. You've made a mistake somewhere in your password, but you can't see it because it doesn't show up. If you hit Control U and ZSH, it deletes the whole thing. So you can just start your password over instead of having to hold down the, the backspace or hit the Enter key and start over again. So that's the cool thing about Control U deleting the whole thing. But again, that only works in ZSH. You'd have to hit the Home and then Control U in order for, for Control U to work in Bash. So that is... Tip number three. So the next tip is a little bit different. So everybody knows pseudo bang bang. And basically what pseudo bang bang does is, it, and when I say bang bang, I mean two exclamation points. Basically what that does is allows you to input the last command that you ran. So in this case, the last command that I ran was ls. And basically what, what that will allow you to do is run sudo on that command. Now, obviously we don't need to run sudo on that, but say you you go through and do this. Pacman-s Firefox, and you hit enter. You can't do that without root. So if we do sudo bang bang, that will fix the problem. We don't have to go through and retype the whole thing. Now, everybody knows sudo bang bang. It's fun to say, right? Sudo bang bang is, you know, whatever. But everybody knows it. But there's another thing you can do with something similar. So let's just say we want to use the contents of the last command. Not the command itself, but the output. We can do that using bang dollar sign. Now, let's go ahead and do something here. So let's do echo hello world. And what that does is it just echoes hello world. Now let's just say we wanted to input that into a file. Uh, it would be very easy. I mean, we could just go through and do echo hello world again and then put that into hello world.txt. We could do that. That's a lot of typing, even with autocomplete, you know, or tab complete. We really don't need to do that. So if we just do echo and then bang 
dollar sign into text.txt, I mean, we just call it that, as you can see, it auto-completed to the output of the last command. So this is good for if you want to take the output of, say, a, a less command or a cat or pretty much anything you want to, that gives you an output of some kind, you can take that output that you've already run, the command's already done, and put it into a text file, you can put it into another command, you can put it into sed, you can put it into whatever you want. It was really quite useful if you want to go through and use the contents of the last command. So I will just reiterate that so that you can see it again. So if we do bang dollar sign and then in bash it may very well not expand for this. This is how ZSH works, but it should work the work the same. It just won't be as functional. It'll just it'll it will look like bang dollar sign until you hit the enter key. So with ZSH, if you hit the space bar and then do whatever you want to do to it, uh, it will actually expand it. But in Bash, you'll probably just stay bang dollar sign until you hit the enter key. So just keep that in mind. But as you can see, that can be quite useful. Now, the next one is something that I think everybody should do. So if you're familiar with an alias, you probably know how functional and awesome they can be. Now, if you get to rely on aliases, you can obviously have a problem when you move to a different machine that doesn't have your bash or zshrc on it. But if you use aliases, and you, you know, I think everybody does, you can actually go through and create some aliases that will correct common typos. So I'm going to cd into my .config file, zsh file here. If we do an ls, I, I have an aliases.txt file. So this basically just allows me to source that file from my zshrc. You don't have to do it that way. A lot of people don't. They just put their aliases in their uh, shell rc file. I happen to keep them out, keep them separate. So I'm going to vim into aliases.txt. And as you can see here, this will allow you to fix ob obvious typos. So if I go through and let's just say I do I cd into doc media again, and I do cd per period period. If I didn't have this alias, it would it would give me an error, because there's no space here. You have to have a space here in order for cd period period to work. And basically, what that does is it takes you up a level. But if you don't have the space, it won't work. Not, but because I have an alias, it will still work, even though it's a typo. I have several things for. If I am typing too fast, so if I try to print the working directory, and it's that's normally PWD, and it works just fine. But if I do PWD, PDW, <laughs> uh, which I'm prone to do, this will actually work because I have an alias for it, even though it was spelled incorrectly. So you can do these things for, like, uh, your... Pac-Man, if you say you spell Pac-Man's PCA, M-A-N, you could go through and create an alias for that to to actually correct itself to Pac-Man, or, or apt, or whatever you want to do. Just create a few aliases for uh, things that you misspell constantly. Not necessarily that you don't know how to spell them, you just, because you're going fast or whatever, you know, you make a mistake. And this way, if you made a mistake, and you have that alias to save your ass, you don't have to go through and retype the command or rerun the command. So that's a great use of aliases. Now, there's obviously a whole bunch of other things you can do with aliases as well, but we won't go through those today. That, that's a topic for another video. Now, let's go ahead and close this, and we'll move on to the next one. So the next one is kind of cool. Now, it has limited utility because most commands that require user input during, them, during their execution... Uh, all, ha, usually have this built in. So, for example, you can, if you're on, see you're on Ubuntu, you can do sudo apt, and, ah, I can't tell, can't type, apt install um, Firefox, again, whatever, and then you can do this, do dash dash no dash confirm, I think is the way you would do it, and I think it's the same way in uh, Pac-Man as well. That basically what this will do is, go through and run this command without you having to go through and hit the yes, uh, the Y key in order to confirm your, uh, that you wanted to actually, you know, install Firefox or do an update or whatever. Uh, most command, no, most commands that require you to have this input 
have an option for you to bypass it. But let's just say it doesn't have an option to bypass it. So let's get. Let's just say app didn't have that, or maybe you didn't remember what the flag was. It's possible that I have the flag wrong. I don't use Ubuntu. But what you could do is use the yes command. So if you do yes, and then the pipe, which is directly above the enter key, at least on my on my keyboard, and then you run this command on Ubuntu, obviously, it would go through and do the exact same thing as no confirm would do. It would just go through and bypass any user input and just install Firefox. Same thing if you're going through and running a uh, an update. Let's, so let's just do this. Let's just say I do sudo pacman dash s s s y y u. Let's just say I do that. And I hit the enter key and I enter my password. And then it's going to ask me, uh, are you sure you want to update and I would have to go through and hit yes. I'd actually have to stay here in front of the computer in order for that to happen. But let's just say Pac-Man didn't have an option to bypass that, which it does. But let's just say it didn't. We could do yes, pipe into that. And it would actually go through and do an update that way. Now, I'm not going to do an update in, on camera because things crash and stuff. I don't want to risk the recording because we're this far and I don't want to start over. Uh, but you could do that. So that is the yes command. Really cool for scripts or something that you want to have the necessity of user input, yes or no, and you don't want to have to sit there in front, in front of it and watch for that prompt to come up. The next one is to allow you to move back and forth between words. So let's say we have some words here, just random words with a command, and let's just say we wanted to move back and forth between these commands. So Alt F and Alt B move back and forth between commands. So we got So Alt B moves backwards in a command. Alt F moves forward word by word in a command. So let's just say we made a mistake in this gibberish in the this one here. We could go back to this one and just delete this one word and then retype it. You know, correcting our mistake. And then we can just go back forward to commands uh, and go to the end of the line. Or we can hit the end key in order to get it back to the end to the end of the line. So that's how you move back and forth between words in a command. So if you have like a, a gigantic one-liner in Bash or ZSH and you've made a mistake smack dab in the middle, you can just go through and do Alt-B in order to get back to it, make your change, and then hit the end key to go back to the end. Or you can go line by line using Alt-F. Now, let's just say we've gone backwards a couple lines here. And we're, say we're here, and we've made a mistake in the word preceding this one. If we do Alt Backspace, that deletes the word prior to the cursor. So when you use your Alt F and Alt B, if you've made, you stop one word too soon, and you then you use Alt Backspace, that will delete the word directly in front of the cursor. And that's really good for when you make a mistake, you want and you want to delete the whole word. Now, obviously, you could just use the Backspace to delete the whole word that way. But this is easier. So Alt F, Alt B moves forwards and backwards between words. Alt Backspace will delete previous words. Uh, and I believe that works exactly the same way in Bash. So the next one is really important. So if you do shut down dash C. So if this, if this is how you shut down your computer and you hit enter, and I'm going to do this on camera so this damn well better work, uh, and hit enter... It's going to schedule your shutdown for the next minute. Let's just say you need to go through and change that. You want to get out of that. So if you do pkill shutdown and do this, it kills the shutdown. Okay, that means it shouldn't shut down in a minute, hopefully. If it does shut down, we're screwed. Uh, and I'll have to start, start over again. That would suck. Uh, but that should go through and shut, kill the shutdown process so that it doesn't actually shut down. So this is good for, let's say you've scheduled your shutdown for a minute from now using shutdown-c. And you suddenly realize, oh shit, I haven't saved my work. You can kill shutdown using this command and go save your work and then just reschedule it. Now, this doesn't work obviously if you do shutdown now because that shuts down your computer right now. <laughs> that's not a great thing, right? So you definitely want to make sure you save your work if you, you're going to use shutdown now. I believe in Bash that it will actually give you some output. 
why it doesn't do that in ZSH and it's giving me an error code is kind of freaking me out right now. So if my if you uh, see a time jump right here, you'll know that my computer shut down. And this command doesn't in fact work in ZSH. And we're I'm kind of waiting for a minute to figure, make sure that it doesn't you know shut my computer down because that would suck. Okay, so the next tip that I want to give you is to how to prettify some output. And what I mean by this is just that sometimes you have a long list of output when you run a command. So let's let me cat a, com a file I have called weather. And basically what this does is it keeps the last 50 uh, inputs of my weather script. And the weather script is then put through tail and, and that goes into my my bar at the top. So that I only have the one bar and it always has the, the most recent. It allows me to control the number of times the weather script updates because SL status goes through and updates every like nanosecond or something. It's really ridiculous. And I don't want the weather to update that much. So I use a cron job to run this script, which puts it into a file and then it does that every hour. And then this, the script can get it, you know, however often it wants, but it was not going to update the script every hour, you know, every nanosecond or whatever. So if I cat this out, I have just a gigantic list of temperatures. It's not a ton. It was a ton before I rewrote the script to actually get rid of, like, the you know, quite a few. It just kept them forever and ever. Uh, I believe I had the same thing when I had a temperature script up here for the CPU. I let it keep it forever and ever and end up having a, a 12 gigabyte file because it literally ran it every three minutes. And I kept the output forever. It was ridiculous. So this, and I did the same thing with weather. So this is, used to be a lot longer, but it's still not pretty. So let's say we cat this into an application called column, if I can spell it right. C-O-L-U-M-N. Now, if this works correctly, we should see it a little bit prettier. And we do. That's what column does. It takes the output of a command and splits it into columns. Now there are a few things you can do with columns. You can control the number of columns it shows you. You can control what the separator for the columns are to, if you, we want to make it even prettier. If you want to find out more just do man column and it will tell you a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it if you want. Uh, you can do the output width, table headings, output separator, separator, table, table columns, and so on and so forth. There's just, It's a very really neat quite, uh, you know, program that will allow you to go through and make an output of a command prettier. So this is not necessarily all that useful on the command line, uh, unless you want them just, you're wor very worried about aesthetics and can't scroll for some reason. But if you use this in a bash script for an output where you're a little bit more worried about how the output looks, this could be really very powerful. Now you can do this in pure bash. You can do it in pure bash. I don't know how, uh, I probably would never learn how because column just does the job. So that is column. All right. The last command, and we've now bypassed a minute, so my computer's not going to shut down. Thank, thanks goodness. The last thing I want to talk to you about today in terms of tips and tricks is how to bypass your shell history. So let's say you're running uh, a script or something that you don't want to appear in your history for someone else. It's a great gag gift. Uh, if you wanted to pull a prank on someone, I suppose you could do it this way. But it's also for security reasons you could run it. You know, please don't go run commands in other people's systems. Don't do that. Uh, don't be an asshole. Uh, I would definitely do that, though. I'm an asshole. I can't help it. Anyways, uh, let's just say for whatever reason you're running some kind of uh, program or you're putting some kind of input into the command line that's sensitive. And you don't want it to be stored forever and ever in your your bash history or your zsh history you can do that very easily you can bypass the history very easily by just putting a space between it so if i do space cd and then i go up a level it actually does keep it there so maybe that doesn't work in in bash um or in, in zsh let's go to bash and find out I actually didn't test that so let's just say we'll cd into document downloads and then uh, We'll see. We'll do space cd, go back, and if I scroll up one, yes, it works in Bash. Doesn't work in ZSH. Uh, I'm glad I, I tested that out uh, beforehand, Matt, dumbass. Uh, anyways, uh, in, in Bash, it will bypass your Bash history. So you technically, my last command was just cd, 
But if we scroll up, it just CDs downloads, which is the command before that. So if you need to bypass your, your history in Bash, this is a way to do it. Just leave a space before you do the command. So that is it. Those are the tips and tricks that I have compiled for you to make your life in the command line easier and prettier and more awesome. Now, there are just a ton more where this came from. And if you're interested in seeing more tips and tricks like this, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. Leave a like, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you're subscribed because I will do it if it's popular enough and, you know, people want it. So uh, definitely do that. So if you have a cool command, leave it in the comments below. I'd like to see it, you know, maybe we can feature it in another video. If you want to get in contact with me, you can do so at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon Chris, East Coast Web Gen 2 is fun too. Marcus, Meglin, Donnie Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Arch Center, American Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.